Section four of Alcibiades one by Plato Translated by Benjamin Jowett. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Kevin Johnson. Alcibiades, if I can be improved by answering, I will answer. Socrates, and first of all, that we may not peradventure be deceived by appearances, fancying perhaps that we are taking care of ourselves when we are not. What is the meaning of a man taking care of himself? And when does he take care? Does he take care of himself when he takes care of what belongs to him? Alcibiades, I should think so. Socrates, when does a man take care of his feet? Does he not take care of them when he takes care of that which belongs to his feet? Alcibiades, I do not understand. Socrates, let me take the hand as an illustration. Does not a ring belong to the finger, and to the finger only? Alcibiades, yes. Socrates, and the shoe in like manner to the foot? Alcibiades, yes. Socrates, and when we take care of our shoes, do we not take care of our feet? Alcibiades, I do not comprehend, Socrates. Socrates, but you would admit, Alcibiades, that to take proper care of a thing is a correct expression. Alcibiades, yes. Socrates, and taking proper care means improving. Alcibiades, yes. Socrates, and what is the art which improves our shoes? Alcibiades, shoemaking. Socrates, then by shoemaking we take care of our shoes. Alcibiades, yes. Socrates, and do we by shoemaking take care of our feet, or by some other art which improves the feet? Alcibiades, by some other art. Socrates, and the same art improves the feet which improves the rest of the body. Alcibiades, very true. Socrates, which is gymnastic. Alcibiades, certainly. Socrates, then by gymnastic we take care of our feet, and by shoemaking of that which belongs to our feet. Alcibiades, very true. Socrates, and by gymnastic we take care of our hands, and by the art of graving rings of that which belongs to our hands. Alcibiades, yes. Socrates, and by gymnastic we take care of the body, and by the art of weaving and the other arts we take care of the things of the body. Alcibiades, clearly. Socrates, then the art which takes care of each thing is different from that which takes care of the belongings of each thing. Alcibiades, true. Socrates, then in taking care of what belongs to you, you do not take care of yourself. Alcibiades, certainly not. Socrates, for the art which takes care of our belongings appears not to be the same as that which takes care of ourselves. Alcibiades, clearly not. Socrates, and now let me ask you, what is the art with which we take care of ourselves? Alcibiades, I cannot say. Socrates, at any rate, thus much has been admitted, that the art is not one which makes any of our possessions, but which makes ourselves better. Alcibiades, true. Socrates, but should we ever have known what art makes a shoe better, if we did not know a shoe? Alcibiades, impossible. Socrates, nor should we know what art makes a ring better, if we did not know a ring. Alcibiades, that is true. Socrates, and can we ever know what art makes a man better, if we do not know what we are ourselves? Alcibiades, impossible. Socrates, and is self-knowledge such an easy thing, and was he to be lightly esteemed to inscribe the text on the temple at Delphi? Or is self-knowledge a difficult thing? which few are able to attain. Alcibiades, at times I fancy, Socrates, that anybody can know himself. At other times the task appears to be very difficult. Socrates, but whether easy or difficult, Alcibiades, still there is no other way. Knowing what we are, we shall know how to take care of ourselves, and if we are ignorant, we shall not know. Alcibiades, that is true. Socrates, well, then, let us see in what way the self-existent can be discovered by us. That will give us a chance of discovering our own existence, 
which otherwise we can never know. Alcibiades, you say truly. Socrates, come now, I beseech you. Tell me with whom you are conversing, with whom but with me. Alcibiades, yes. Socrates, as I am with you? Alcibiades, yes. Socrates, that is to say, I, Socrates, am talking. Alcibiades, yes. Socrates, and Alcibiades is my hearer. Alcibiades, yes. Socrates, and I, in talking, use words. Alcibiades, certainly. Socrates, and talking and using words have, I suppose, the same meaning. Alcibiades, to be sure. Socrates, and the user is not the same as the thing which he uses. Alcibiades, what do you mean? Socrates, I will explain. The shoemaker, for example, uses a square tool, and a circular tool, and other tools for cutting. Alcibiades, yes. Socrates, but the tool is not the same as the cutter and user of the tool. Alcibiades, of course not. Socrates, and in the same way the instrument of the harper is to be distinguished from the harper himself. Alcibiades, it is. Socrates, now the question which I asked was whether you conceive the user to be always different from that which he uses. Alcibiades, I do. Socrates, then what shall we say of the shoemaker? Does he cut with his tools only, or with his hands? Alcibiades, with his hands as well. Socrates, he uses his hands too? Alcibiades, yes. Socrates, and does he use his eyes in cutting leather? Alcibiades, he does. Socrates, and we admit that the user is not the same with the things which he uses. Alcibiades, yes. Socrates, then the shoemaker and the harper are to be distinguished from the hands and feet which they use. Alcibiades, clearly. Socrates, and does not a man use the whole body? Alcibiades, certainly. Socrates, and that which uses is different from that which is used. Alcibiades, true. Socrates, then a man is not the same as his own body. Alcibiades, that is the inference. Socrates, what is he then? Alcibiades, I cannot say. Socrates, nay, you can say that he is the user of the body. Alcibiades, yes. Socrates, and the user of the body is the soul? Alcibiades, yes, the soul. Socrates, and the soul rules. Alcibiades, yes. Socrates, let me make an assertion which will, I think, be universally admitted. Alcibiades, what is it? Socrates, that man is one of three things. Alcibiades, what are they? Socrates, soul, body, or both together, forming a whole. Alcibiades, certainly. Socrates, but did we not say that the actual ruling principle of the body is man? Alcibiades, yes, we did. Socrates, and does the body rule over itself? Alcibiades, certainly not. Socrates, it is subject, as we were saying. Alcibiades, yes. Socrates, then that is not the principle which we are seeking. Alcibiades, it would seem not. Socrates, but may we say that the union of the two rules over the body, and consequently that this is man. Alcibiades, very likely. Socrates, the most unlikely of all things, for if one of the members is subject, the two united cannot possibly rule. Alcibiades, true. Socrates, but since neither the body nor the union of the two is man, either man has no real existence, or the soul is man. Alcibiades, just so. Socrates, is anything more required to prove that the soul is man? Alcibiades, certainly not. The proof is, I think, quite sufficient. Socrates, and if the proof, although not perfect, be sufficient, we shall be satisfied. More precise proof will be supplied when we have discovered that which we were led to omit, from a fear that the inquiry would be too much protracted. Alcibiades, what was that? Socrates, what I meant when I said that absolute existence must be first considered. But now, instead of absolute existence, we have been considering the nature of individual existence. And this may, perhaps, be sufficient, for surely there is nothing which may be called more properly ourselves than the soul. 
alcibiades there is nothing socrates then we may truly conceive that you and i are conversing with one another soul to soul alcibiades very true socrates and that is just what i was saying before that i socrates am not arguing or talking with the face of alcibiades but with the real alcibiades or in other words with his soul alcibiades true socrates then he who bids a man know himself would have him know his soul alcibiades that appears to be true socrates he whose knowledge only extends to the body knows the things of a man and not the man himself alcibiades that is true socrates then neither the physician regarded as a physician nor the trainer regarded as a trainer knows himself alcibiades he does not socrates the husbandmen and the other craftsmen are very far from knowing themselves for they would seem not even to know their own belongings when regarded in relation to the arts which they practice they are even further removed from self-knowledge for they only know the belongings of the body which minister to the body alcibiades that is true socrates then if temperance is the knowledge of self in respect of his art none of them is temperate alcibiades i agree socrates and this is the reason why their arts are accounted vulgar and are not such as a good man would practise alcibiades quite true socrates again he who cherishes his body cherishes not himself but what belongs to him alcibiades that is true socrates but he who cherishes his money cherishes neither himself nor his belongings but is in a stage yet further removed from himself alcibiades i agree socrates then the money-maker has really ceased to be occupied with his own concerns alcibiades true socrates and if any one has fallen in love with the person of alcibiades he loves not alcibiades but the belongings of alcibiades alcibiades true socrates but he who loves your soul is the true lover alcibiades that is the necessary inference socrates the lover of the body goes away when the flower of youth fades alcibiades true socrates but he who loves the soul goes not away as long as the soul follows after virtue alcibiades yes socrates and i am the lover who goes not away but remains with you when you are no longer young and the rest are gone alcibiades yes socrates and therein you do well and i hope that you will remain socrates then you must try to look your best alcibiades i will socrates the fact is that there is only one lover of alcibiades the son of cleinias there neither is nor ever has been seemingly any other and he is his darling socrates the son of sophroniscus and phianerite alcibiades true socrates and did you not say that if i had not spoken first you were on the point of coming to me and inquiring why i only remained alcibiades that is true socrates the reason was that i loved you for your own sake whereas other men love what belongs to you and your beauty which is not you is fading away just as your true self is beginning to bloom and i will never desert you if you are not spoiled and deformed by the athenian people for the danger which i most fear is that you will become a lover of the people and will be spoiled by them many a noble athenian has been ruined in this way for the demis of the great-hearted erecteus is of a fair countenance but you should see him naked wherefore observe the caution which i give you alcibiades what caution socrates practice yourself sweet friend in learning what you ought to know before you enter on politics and then you will have an antidote which will keep you out of harm's way alcibiades good advice socrates but i wish that you would explain to me in what way i am to take care of myself socrates have we not made an advance for we are at any rate tolerably well agreed as to what we are and there is no longer any danger as we once feared 
that we might be taking care not of ourselves but of something which is not ourselves alcibiades that is true socrates and the next step will be to take care of the soul and look to that alcibiades certainly socrates leaving the care of our bodies and of our properties to others alcibiades very good socrates but how can we have a perfect knowledge of the things of the soul for if we know them then i suppose we shall know ourselves can we really be ignorant of the excellent meaning of the delphian inscription of which we were just now speaking alcibiades what have you in your thoughts socrates socrates i will tell you what i suspect to be the meaning and lesson of that inscription let me take an illustration from sight which i imagine to be the only one suitable to my purpose alcibiades what do you mean socrates consider if someone were to say to the eye see thyself as you might say to a man know thyself what is the nature and meaning of this precept would not his meaning be that the eye should look at that in which it would see itself alcibiades clearly socrates and what are the objects in looking at which we see ourselves alcibiades clearly socrates in looking at mirrors and the like socrates very true and is there not something of the nature of a mirror in our own eyes alcibiades certainly socrates did you ever observe that the face of a person looking into the eye of another is reflected as in a mirror and in the visual organ which is over against him and which is called the pupil there is a sort of image of the person looking alcibiades that is quite true socrates then the eye looking at another eye and at that in the eye which is most perfect and which is the instrument of vision will there see itself alcibiades that is evident socrates but looking at anything else either in man or in the world and not to what resembles this it will not see itself alcibiades very true socrates then if the eye is to see itself it must look at the eye and at that part of the eye where sight which is the virtue of the eye resides alcibiades true socrates and if the soul my dear alcibiades is ever to know herself must she not look at the soul and especially at that part of the soul in which her virtue resides and to any other which is like this alcibiades i agree socrates socrates and do we know of any part of our souls more divine than that which has to do with wisdom and knowledge alcibiades there is none socrates then this is that part of the soul which resembles the divine and he who looks at this and at the whole class of things divine will be most likely to know himself alcibiades clearly socrates and self-knowledge we agree to be wisdom alcibiades true socrates but if we have no self-knowledge and no wisdom can we ever know our own good and evil alcibiades how can we socrates socrates you mean that if you did not know alcibiades there would be no possibility of your knowing that what belonged to alcibiades was really his alcibiades it would be quite impossible socrates nor should we know that we were the persons to whom anything belonged if we did not know ourselves alcibiades how could we socrates and if we did not know our own belongings neither should we know the belongings of our belongings alcibiades clearly not socrates then we were not altogether right in acknowledging just now that a man may know what belongs to him and yet not know himself nay rather he cannot even know the belongings of his belongings for the discernment of the things of self and of the things which belong to the things of self appear all to be the business of the same man and of the same art alcibiades so much may be supposed socrates and he who knows not the things which belong to himself will in like manner be ignorant of the things which belong to others alcibiades very true socrates and if he knows not the affairs of others he will not know the affairs of states 
Alcibiades, certainly not. Socrates, then such a man can never be a statesman. Alcibiades, he cannot. Socrates, nor an economist. Alcibiades, he cannot. Socrates, he will not know what he is doing. Alcibiades, he will not. Socrates, and will not he who is ignorant fall into error? Alcibiades, assuredly. Socrates, and if he falls into error, will he not fail both in his public and private capacity? Alcibiades, yes, indeed. Socrates, and failing, will he not be miserable? Alcibiades, very. Socrates, and what will become of those for whom he is acting? Alcibiades, they will be miserable also. Socrates, then he who is not wise and good cannot be happy. Alcibiades, he cannot. Socrates, the bad, then, are miserable. Alcibiades, yes, very. Socrates, and if so, not he who has riches, but he who has wisdom, is delivered from his misery. Alcibiades, clearly. Socrates, cities, then, if they are to be happy, do not want walls, or triremes, or docks, or numbers, or size, Alcibiades, without virtue. Parentheses. Compare Aristotle, Politica, end of parentheses. Alcibiades, indeed, they do not. Socrates, and you must give the citizens virtue, if you mean to administer their affairs rightly or nobly. Alcibiades, certainly. Socrates, but can a man give that which he has not? Alcibiades, impossible. Socrates, then you or any one who means to govern and superintend, not only himself and the things of himself, but the state and the things of the state, must in the first place acquire virtue. Alcibiades, that is true. Socrates, you have not therefore to obtain power or authority in order to enable you to do what you wish for yourself and the state, but justice and wisdom. Alcibiades, clearly. Socrates, you and the state, if you act wisely and justly, will act according to the will of God. Alcibiades, certainly. Socrates, as I was saying before, you will look only at what is bright and divine and act with a view to them. Alcibiades, yes. Socrates, in that mirror you will see and know yourselves and your own good. Alcibiades, yes. Socrates, and so you will act rightly and well. Alcibiades, yes. Socrates, in which case I will be security for your happiness. Alcibiades, I accept the security. Socrates, but if you act unrighteously, your eye will turn to the dark and godless, and being in darkness and ignorance of yourselves, you will probably do deeds of darkness. Alcibiades, very possibly. Socrates, for if a man, my dear Alcibiades, has the power to do what he likes, but has no understanding, what is likely to be the result, either to him as an individual or to the state? For example, if he be sick and is able to do what he likes, not having the mind of a physician, having moreover tyrannical power, and no one daring to reprove him, what will happen to him? Will he not be likely to have his constitution ruined? Alcibiades, that is true. Socrates, or again in a ship, if a man having the power to do what he likes, has no intelligence or skill in navigation, do you see what will happen to him and to his fellow sailors? Alcibiades, yes, I see that they will all perish. Socrates, and in like manner in a state, and where there is any power and authority which is wanting in virtue, will not misfortune in like manner ensue? Alcibiades, certainly. Socrates, not tyrannical power, then, my good Alcibiades, should be the aim either of individuals or states, if they would be happy, but virtue. Alcibiades, that is true. Socrates, and before they have virtue, to be commanded by a superior is better for men as well as for children. Parentheses, compare Aristotle, Politica. End of parentheses. Alcibiades, that is evident. Socrates, and that which is better is also nobler. Alcibiades, true. Socrates, and what is nobler is more becoming. Alcibiades, certainly. Socrates, then to the bad man slavery is more becoming, because better. Alcibiades, true. Socrates, then vice is only suited to a slave. 
Alcibiades, yes. Socrates, and virtue to a free man. Alcibiades, yes. Socrates, and, O oh my friend, is not the condition of a slave to be avoided? Alcibiades, certainly, Socrates. Socrates, and are you now conscious of your own state, and do you know whether you are a free man or not? Alcibiades, I think that I am very conscious indeed of my own state. Socrates, and do you know how to escape out of a state, which I do not even like to name to my beauty? Alcibiades, yes, I do. Socrates, how? Alcibiades, by your help, Socrates. Socrates, that is not well said, Alcibiades. Alcibiades, what ought I to have said? Socrates, by the help of God. Alcibiades, I agree, and I further say that our relations are likely to be reversed. From this day forward, I must and will follow you as you have followed me. I will be the disciple, and you shall be my master. Socrates, oh, that is rare. My love breeds another love, and so like the stork, I shall be cherished by the bird whom I have hatched. Alcibiades, strange but true, and henceforward I shall begin to think about justice. Socrates, and I hope that you will persist, although I have fears, not because I doubt you, but I see the power of the state, which may be too much for both of us. End of part four. Recording by Kevin Johnson. End of Alcibiades I by Plato. Translated by Benjamin Jowett.